Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this episode for Black History Month. Um, today, I have the co-founder of BVEDS, which is the British Veterinary Ethnicity and Diversity Society. Um, I think all of us know that racism has a real impact on the mental well-being of um, Black and ethnic minority colleagues. And um, it's always good for us to have peer support from those um, with lived experiences. And so that's what BVEDS primarily does. But um, today our guest is one of the first people to get involved with the Veterinary Diversity Conference in the UK. He also was um, somebody who created, co-created the race and the veterinary profession for Nottingham University uh, Vet School. And he was part of uh, the largest nationwide survey on racism in the veterinary sector, along with the RVC. Um, welcome, Thebe. How are you doing today? Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're between calls and I'm so, so grateful that you um, decided to join us. Um, I was wondering if you could just um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and maybe your ethnic background. So, yeah, my name's uh, Navratnam Partheban. I'm a farm animal clinical vet uh, working in the southeast. And uh, my ethnic background, my parents immigrated into this country. My mother's from Sri Lanka, my father's from Malaysia, and um, I'm Hindu Tamil. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, I think it's so important that we actually specify that because a lot of people make assumptions and they don't really know. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, could you please just outline your journey into the veterinary medicine, um, you know, your path? And, you know, given that all generations want some sort of upward social mobility for their offspring, um, you know, what did your parents think about your career choice? So coming, coming from a an immigrant family. I think the biggest thing is is about achieving and overachieving because, again, we come into this. They, they come into this country to do better for their family, and, uh, and 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 the big thing is is coming as immigrants. Their professions are always seen bigger than any other sort of type of job. So ultimately, they wanted me to do a profession, um, and especially from uh, the global south, professions are, not, are seen as more stable jobs. Um, so that was that was the initial criteria but I had a love of animals I had a love of science and um and you know naturally with a love of science people would ask you to do you know engineering or medicine but I had an interest with animals so uh, I did a degree in zoology um, I was thinking I might go into academia or something like that but actually thinking about that I thought well actually having a profession there is some um truth in what they say you know having that profession gives you that security when times are hard we've got something to fall back on and um, so then I wanted to be a vet um, and my parents were not too sure about it uh, my family weren't too sure about it um, but I think it was more like well if I can prove that it's something that you know can be successful then I'll go for it I did have an uncle who was a vet down in East London um, who I spent about a week with and then once I'd seen him working with animals I thought well I've seen the role model I've seen the type of job and I, I, I decided that's what I wanted to do. Um, so that's why I got into veterinary. And uh, oh yeah, uh, I think as they've followed my career, they've sort, sort of slowly got uh, more interested in, in the profession. And actually I've got um, cousins and people like that have applied for veterinary since. That is great. Isn't it nice to see that we've actually, you're able to influence, you know, uh, you know our generations coming behind us because we always end up being one of the first, if not even the first, but um, yeah, that is amazing. Um, I was wondering if I can just chat to you about this. You know, everybody's life journey is, um, I always say invariably different and very punctuated with peaks and troughs, so to speak. Did you experience any um, culturally specific challenges uh, that your colleagues and your classmates probably have not experienced? Yeah, so going to vet school, most people have come from, you know, backgrounds where they've been in, in, in among people like them, you know. So at vet school, the, the white people, you know, it's 99% white um, and they've all come from, you know, they, they, a lot of them come from private schools, privately educated schools. A lot of them come from smaller rural communities or small towns. So they haven't met anyone like me that looks like me, that has a name like mine that has anything, another religion apart from Christianity for, you know, for the first time they're meeting someone non-Christian. So there's a lot of um, language um, and things that are said that actually can be offensive. Uh, even, you know, 
um, when we talk about other religions like Islam and people expect me to know everything about it, you know, and, and to be the spokesperson for Islam as well as my own religion, as well as any other religion that people of colour follow. So it, it was it was difficult at like that. And then also being a Hindu, people challenged me, you know, how actually would I be fair in treating a cow? Because that's meant to be a sacred animal. Um, and I know recently somebody, another vet was talking about somebody questioning them about treating pigs being a Muslim. And, and as if we could, we would treat them, we wouldn't be able to treat them fairly because of our religion. So I think there's a lot of that, that sort of thing that I've had to been, you know, being a farm vet, I've had to challenge, I've had to try and prove um, more. Um, but I think they're all false um, beliefs by some people, I think. Wow, that's unbelievable. Um, you know, I and I say that in the sense that I've experienced similar, but, you know, for people to kind of drill down on religion as you are the be all and know all of anything that isn't Christianity, it is a little bit ludicrous when you think about it. But um, yeah, I mean, how did you overcome some of these challenges? Like just a specific example in case somebody listening is potentially going through the same thing as you. The, the, the biggest thing is don't give up. Um, and, and always remember that it's just an individual or a group, small group of people who are saying that. But if you want to do something, you go out and you will find somebody who will give you that opportunity. And that's happened to me. So, you know, people would have made a lot of assumptions based on my name, based on my colour, based on where I'm from, based on my accent. And, and yes, I had to work harder to get so I'm talking about farm animal veterinary for example you know the farm animal sector for example which was my passion so people a lot of people judged me you know I don't come from a farming background I'm you know haven't got a you know I, I look like how I look like but I what I did was I, I worked hard I tried to get as much experience as possible I tried to talk to as many people try and make as big a network as possible become visible and and you know and yes I had to maybe you know, ring about 100, 200 more people than the average vet student has to. But the one one person gave me that opportunity. I grabbed it with both hands and that gave me the, the, the chance to get into the industry. And therefore, some of those biases reduce because I'm already here and people can't use that against me anymore. Um, so it's about, it's about really trying to find the right door. And sometimes the door you see in front of you might not be the right one, but go around. And even if people give excuses why you can't answer the, into that door, you'll find another door to get in. Or a window. <laughs> or a window. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, what would you like uh, the landscape of um, the veterinary future to look like for students as well as professionals from black, Asian and ethnic minority groups? Um, just going forward, what are your thoughts and what would ideally be like for us? Um, so I think the first thing is I want difference to be celebrated. Um, so I want that, you know, we can all be, that the people already here, I want us to feel like we can be who we are. So, you know, for example, you can celebrate your culture, I can celebrate my culture. And it's not as though it's a performative action is actually part of the veterinary culture, you know, all of our cultures. So be proud of our names, be proud of where we're from, be proud of where our parents are from. And, and I think once, you know, and, and, and if the property profession can also celebrate that as well, um, and then we, and, and then actually normalize it, normalize difference, then I think going forward, we're gonna basically bring more people along with us. We're gonna bring more children, more um, adults, whoever into our profession but also we're going to be a great example to the rest of British society on how to behave on how to act and how to be successful so going forward I think um, we need to just accept that difference is the norm difference is the future so we need to embrace it and, and celebrate it uh, and then once we do that also is to create the, the systems to support that difference as well. So when things are going well, that's easy. When things go badly, what are we going to do to, to, to change things and support that? So have the right systems in place, have the right people in place um, uh, to, support, to support difference in, in another way. Couldn't agree with you more. That is amazing. Um, you know, I'm really keen on seeing um, a more diverse picture as well um, when it comes to the industry that I love very much. Um, for a young person um, who's listening to us, um, 
you know, I know you've already given a little message there, but what would you say specifically about if that on the fence about joining us, what would you say? If you're a young person and you're interested in joining veterinary medicine, I'd say do it. And I think now is a really good time because when I applied, there was nobody, nowhere to go, no support, no role models, nothing. I think, you know, in all those years, I'm thinking I'm showing my age now. Actually, we have got more role models. We have got more systems set up. So actually, when you come, we can look after you and we can help you thrive. And actually, it's a brilliant profession because, again, um, there's so many avenues, so many opportunities. You know, I've, I've been both a clinical vet. I've worked in education. I've worked in industry. So, you know, as a profession, it's brilliant. There's some good people in the profession. Um, so don't let the... The, the, the previous images or thoughts about what medicine is because actually it's it's changing uh, for the better in a lot of different areas yeah 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 I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more um the last few questions I was just wondering if you were to have dinner with three people from history or anyone who's alive today who would you choose and why if I was gonna have dinner with three people yeah any three people there's no nothing stopping you you can invite three people any three people who would it be okay so i would um <laughs> i would want to invite um so martin luther king and only because i spent time following his journey i went to alabama mississippi i went to uh, georgia and i've spent and i've just done a report looking at how to color and agriculture and part of that was to follow his journey to see some of the barriers he faced, some of the actions he took. And I just, I would love to hear how he did that, just to give me the, the inspiration and the confidence and to, and, and to hear that, I think. I think another person, and I think I'm going to blame my eldest son, would be Lewis Hamilton, because Lewis Hamilton has entered a sector where he's the only black person, you know, when he entered, but he became the greatest driver in a sector where he's the only one. And he's now... And, and, and with that privilege that he's now got, he's trying to create um, opportunity for others like him um, and not like him to enter the sector. And when we talk about veterinary having this very monocultural, you know, identity, I think racing is the same way, Formula One racing. But the way he's gone about it, I, I've got, I, I take my hats off, but he's also the best. You know, and for my child, my son, he looks at him and he's just and, and in any dream, you know, he's the most inspirational man in his life. So I, I know my hat's off to Lewis Hamilton for doing that, though, you know, um, it is a tough, it is a tough life. It is a tough life. So that that'll be my, my first two. And then I think for me, um, I would probably pick. Um, I'm just going to think about it. I, I'd probably pick um, the, the, the the president of, um, who would I pick now? Uh, I would pick. Can be anyone. Is this going to really? be edited? <laughs> yeah. We'll I'm just trying it. to think of a third person that I would pick um, around a table. Um, I would probably pick um, uh, uh, J uh, uh, the shrunken captain of the 1996 World Cup. So ah. his name was Arjuna Ranatunga, okay? So Sri Lanka started playing cricket in 19, 1982, a small nation of about a few million. And from 1982, they won the World Cup in 1996. Against all the odds, they played the best teams in the world, but it was team unity. There was a lot of division, but he brought them together. And it was during wartime. In a, in, a, in a country and that little nation beat the whole world in cricket and they'd only been playing for since you know for 14 years professional cricket and you know they were they, they were the, the bottom team in the world cup when they started that tournament and they won it so for me how the team spirit the unity the leadership the the, the, you know, one player was called out and he took the team and supported him. I think for me was inspirational as well. So my third third person would be the shrunken uh, cricket team captain of the 96 World Cup. Oh, the conversation at that table. 
<laughs> That'll be amazing. I watched that game because um, my parents are avid cricket fans. They literally, oh, no. they just stick to the screen all the time. So yeah, I could definitely see why you'd say that. That oh, is yeah. amazing. I've got a big picture of him and uh, yeah, look at him every, you know, see him every day pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's so important that we have role models that A, kind of emulate what we want to do, but also who look like us. And and it's it's one of the things that I feel really strongly about is making sure that whomever I'm speaking to about whatever it is we're doing, we're visible so that they can, you know, our kids, our, our kids, friends, everything, they can see that, oh, right, okay, that is possible, which is really great. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, totally agree. I was wondering, um, you know, is there any way people can um, get a hold of you um, or follow you? What handle would you prefer? LinkedIn, Instagram, how can we get hold of you if wanted to maybe um, catch up with you and maybe join BVEDS and see what we're sure. you know, doing? Um, so personally, you know, you can catch me on my email, vetsfarmuk at gmail.com. Um, I have a Twitter account, so Navratnam part one uh, or LinkedIn. Yep, just just search my name and you'll find me LinkedIn. BVEDS as a, as a group, we've got our own uh, Twitter account, BVEDS2016. Um, or you can email us at bvez2016 at gmail.com as well. Um, so th those are the best places to find us. And yeah, just send us a message, uh, get in touch, and we're always welcome. I'm always happy to talk to people and, and, and chat. That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I'm sure everybody listening uh, really enjoyed that. Um, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me.